I decided it was time to repair the fence at our house. I thought about doing it myself, but to be honest, I was really kind of busy and I just didn't have the time or inclination to do it. So I got a quote for it, and it was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of five to $6,000. Suddenly, I had the time and inclination once more. I thought, you know, I, I think I can do this. And it was a fair quote. It was a fair quote. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, outrageous for the amount of work. It was quite a bit of labor. Um, and it took some time, but uh, I got it done. And, you know, something about it really felt good. Uh, it felt good to dig in the dirt. It felt good to uh, saw the posts, stain them, you know, get the nail gun out teach the boys how to set a, a plumb post and a level fence rail. It felt really good. And I really couldn't help <clears throat> but think about the obvious metaphor of mending fences and that relating to, <clears throat> excuse me, relating to relationships. So today that's what I'd like to talk about. I'd like to talk about three lessons that I actually learned from mending a fence. If you like titles, I might call this Lessons in Relationships from the Fence Row. The first thing I had to establish is that I had to recognize this fence needed to be fixed. Now, again, for me, it was obvious. Uh, the color was all off. Uh, the wood was faded. There was mold and moss growing out of it. The dog routinely escaped out of it. So it was pretty obvious. With people and relationships, though, sometimes the signs are obvious. Sometimes they're not. Maybe you notice a, a bit of a cold shoulder between you and, and someone who you once had felt pretty close with, or maybe there's just some unusual distance there. Whatever the case may be, we need to do something about it quickly. When you recognize a problem or an issue, you need to do something about it quickly. Now, for me, it was a relatively simple matter. Once I finally got over the mental hurdle that said, yes, I'm going to start this project, it was going to the hardware store with a credit card and buying all the material I need and, and getting started into it. But with people, it can be a little bit more complicated. We won't turn there, but Matthew 18 gives us the uh, outline there for how we reconcile relationships. It talks about going to our brother occasionally with someone, but more often than not, I think uh, we find that the reality is it's a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing that we find ourselves doing, going to that person that may be that there's something just not quite right, something we need to mend. Sometimes it's going to them and saying, hey, um, what's going on? Well, you know, I've noticed something. I don't know if you've noticed it. You know, well, what's up? And just being open and honest about it. Let's turn to Proverbs 17, verse 14. Proverbs 17, verse 14. Sometimes when you do know what the problem is, you know something specific, sometimes it's just having that difficult conversation, going to a person and saying, listen, I know there's a situation, but we need to talk. Sometimes that's what we have to step up and do. Proverbs 17 and verse 14, we're given some very helpful advice here. It says, the beginning of strife is like releasing water, therefore, Stop contention before a quarrel starts. Now, the sooner that we can begin to talk to someone that maybe we, we've had an issue with, the sooner we can begin to mend things. Now, for my fence row, I really didn't have that option. I bought this house, and it was kind of in that shape, so I had to sort of deal with it. And I couldn't help but think that, you know, had the person who owned the house prior to me done a little more to take care of this fence, they could have saved me a lot of time and effort. But the point is that with people, Sometimes we just have to go early. We have to, s to start early so that we don't have that, uh, that contention. We can stop a great contention before it starts. The other thing we might find is that if we do this early on, we might find there's just kind of a, a, a bit of a misunderstanding. We're kind of led to that thought actually in verse 15. Verse 15 in Pro Proverbs 17 says this. It says, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them are like an abomination to the Lord. Basically, what this scripture is telling us is that when we go and begin assuming what other people think or what they've thought or maybe assuming what they've said or told other people or assuming their intentions, then we have a problem. And it's not just a little problem. It says it's an abomination to the Lord. That's a big problem. That's no small thing. 
if we're assuming what other people think and we're assuming that they're trying to wrong us or hurt us in some way. So going to them early can help straighten that out, help to avoid a small problem or maybe even a misunderstanding becoming a bigger one. Next, if we go ahead and turn over page maybe to uh, Proverbs 18, verse 1 to 2, we find out what happens when we go to, to people and we give them a chance to maybe explain how they felt or what their process of thinking was. Proverbs 18, verse 1 says, A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. So we have to have a genuine sincerity when we go to people and we talk to them and we feel like we need to reconcile something. You know, if we spend more time worrying about steamrolling them with our feelings than listening to understand their side of the story, we can find ourselves in a serious problem. We can find ourselves adding to that abomination or creating that abomination to God. Notice as we go on down in verse 12 of Proverbs 18. It says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. He who, has a, who, he, he who answers a matter before he hears it, it's a folly and a shame to him. You know, the bottom line is that reconciliation has to start with humility. Reconciliation has to start with humility, especially it has to start with that person who's going to make the first move. We can't go to, to someone that we think who's, you know, we have an issue with and say, well, listen, this is what you did to me. And we have to go with an open mind and an open heart. We can't go in with preconceived notions. So lesson one, then, is we must recognize when there's a problem and quickly approach people with humility to resolve it. Recognize when there's a problem and quickly approach people with humility to resolve it. Once I got into this project of working on the fence, I realized something very quickly. It was going to cost me more than I thought it was in the first place. That's not just in terms of dollars, but in terms of time. In dollars, it probably cost me twice as much as what I thought it was going to. Now, part of that was because I was being cheap and I was trying to save uh, old fence posts and reuse them, which I was able to do that. But something I learned is that fence, that are, fence posts that are 15, 20 years old are really dry, and they soak up about twice as much stain. So there was kind of a bit of a cost overrun on, on my part there, uh, not accounting for that. But the bigger thing that I realized is that this project took much longer than I thought it would. I started on Memorial Day or thereabouts of last year, and I figured, well, I'll have this done by about Labor Day. Well, I think it was January 1st of this year that I finally got it done. And I say got it done because I still have one small personal intrigate that goes out into the woods that's not quite done yet. But for all intents and purposes, it's, it's holding the dog in, and that's the important thing right now. <laughs> There was much, much more work involved than I thought there was going to be. I mean, the type of work was what I knew it was going to be, but it just took a lot longer. Relationships can be that way, too. When it comes to reconciling a relationship, it can take a while. Hurt goes deep. Feelings are deep sometimes. And oftentimes, there's much more work involved there than what we might, might have originally anticipated. Let's take a turn over to uh, Colossians 3 and start in chapter 12. Colossians 3 and verse 12. You know, when we want a relationship repaired, we want to be reconciled with someone we might have had a falling out with, we want that to happen quickly. You know, with the fence, I had that option. It was a $5,000 option, but that option was there. But with people, that doesn't always happen. But we're given a very uh, important perspective here when we read about the character of the new man in Colossians 3. <clears throat> Verse 12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint about uh, or against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. We're given the baseline here for the model for forgiveness. Christ forgave us for everything. And that leaves nothing out. All the sins that we have committed over our entire lives, big, small, those all led to Christ's death. 
but he's been able to, he was able to, he did, he does, forgive us for them. In the grand scheme of things, what offense might there exist between us and another person? There are some big hurts out there. I'm not saying there aren't. But when we look at it on God's timeline and not our own, we can begin to see that there's room for forgiveness. There's room for reconciliation. Notice some of the adjectives that are used here. Bearing with one another, forgiving one, uh, one another, kindness, humility, meekness. Do any of those have a connotation of fast or quick about them? You have long suffering. It's got the word long right in it. It takes time. It takes time. We must be patient with others to forgive us. We want it to happen overnight. We want it to be reconciled. And reconciliation can come, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer than what we might want. Lesson number two, then, rebuilding relationships takes time. Rebuilding relationships takes some time. The last thing I began to notice with the Spence is that, as I said, I started on it in May of last year, uh, finished it up around January of this year, and already here it is May again. And as I walk around to the first part of the fence where I first started, I've noticed there's already some work to be done. There's some places where the stain's been rubbed off there, where the latch slides in and out of the post, or where kids have gone over top the fence rather than opening this nice, neat gate that I just repaired. Or there's been rabbit holes, things like that. It needs maintenance. This fence needs a little maintenance. It's not a one-shot deal. It's not something that I just fixed once and something that I walked away from. Relationships need constant care and nurturing. The best of relationships need that, but especially reconciled ones. Let's turn to 1 Peter 4, verse 8. 1 Peter 4. Verse 8. It says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. The New Living Translation puts it this way. It says, Most important of all, continue to show deep love for one another, for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Continue. Again, it's not a one-shot deal. It's an ongoing work. It's an ongoing effort to reconcile relationships. Once done, I found that I was really glad this fence was done. A lot of reasons. One, it had been a lot of work. Two, I don't have to keep chasing the dog around. And three, you know, it's nice to look at. It's nice to go through, walk through the gates that were basically functionless before and be able to go in and out of the backyard without having to truck through the house and take off my shoes and not trapes mud all over the, the house. This fence went from being a useless eyesore to something that's very valuable and useful. Relationships are the same. With a little effort, relationship can go from a state of burden to being a joy. With a little bit of effort, relationships can be reconciled from a burden to a joy. Of course, in the course of this process, I found that relationships are very much like fence rows, especially mending them. Sometimes they are in need of repair. And when we decide it's time to repair them, we must move quickly. We must go forward, approach the situation with humility, but with a determination to fix it. We must take time it takes time for people to become reconciled, to trust us, and we must allow people time to be reconciled to us. And finally, it requires constant care and nurturing. It's an ongoing process. A good relationship will take time, but will also can take continued effort and love and concern from each party in order to last. By doing so, relationships, like fence rows, can be enjoyed and used for many years to come.